Somebody call 911. This man needs help. Sudden cardiac arrest brings thousands of patients to emergency rooms throughout the world daily. Many of these patients have been revived with the shock paddles of an external defibrillator to restore normal heart rhythm. Fortunately for these patients, who were at risk of sudden cardiac death, small implantable cardiac defibrillators, or ICDs, bring miniature technology and security of the ER directly to the patient and to the surgeon behind the mask in the OR. This is OR Behind the Mask. I've had the heart problem for five or six years. I've had no sig significant pain or anything over the last, say, four years. So it was very much unexpected to have a heart attack. Well, I've heard that um, I had a heart attack on the plane and they rushed me off and defibrillated. Then I woke up in the hospital here. You know, obviously if it wasn't for the doctors and nurses being available to administer CPR, um, things could have been a lot worse. But uh, if it wasn't for the defibrillator unit, you know, uh, my dad wouldn't be alive today. Stanley was fortunate. An external cardiac defibrillator saved his life. The human heart beats more than 30 million times a year. Your heart's pumping or rhythm is controlled by steady electrical signals produced by its natural pacemaker, the sinoatrial node. Of the estimated 350,000 people in the United States who die annually of sudden cardiac arrest death, many had a hidden problem with their heart rhythm called tachyarrhythmia. This is a too fast heartbeat and is caused by a disturbance in the electrical activity that regulates each beat. When this condition originates in the heart's lower chambers, it poses serious, life-threatening problems. Some symptoms related to this condition include unexplained dizziness or fainting or palpitations. Two variations of tachyarrhythmia are ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. If you have ventricular tachycardia, your ventricles are not activated in the usual manner by your conduction system. Your ventricles beat in an organized manner, but very rapidly. Ventricular tachycardia can sometimes change into ventricular fibrillation. In ventricular fibrillation, the ventricles quiver due to chaotic, uncoordinated electrical activity, and no blood is pumped from the heart. In either case, an implantable defibrillator, or ICD, implanted under the skin in the upper chest, will monitor the heart's rhythm. When a potentially fatal, rapid heartbeat is detected, the device automatically delivers the appropriate life-saving therapy. A few years ago, while walking back to his car after playing a game of basketball in the park, Willie Bacon's heart went into ventricular fibrillation. This dangerously fast, unstable heart rate prevented Willie's heart from pumping blood to his body. Willie was extremely lucky. When he collapsed and his heart stopped, Gloria Cleary, a park recreation specialist, called 911. Somebody ran into my office and said a man just passed out. And then when I got to Mr. Bacon, he was literally dead. I immediately started um, CPR, the mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, and then the, uh, the heart massages. Um, I was well into about, maybe about a minute, a minute and a half, when he yeah. took a breath and yeah. came right back. Within a few minutes, the paramedics arrived and defibrillated him. I believe that uh, the defibrillator played the most important uh, role in saving my life, as well as Gloria Clary. If it had not been for the emergency crew, defibrillating me on that day, I would not be alive also. The last that I can uh, remember is um, when I was leaving the park on my way to my vehicle to return to my home, I collapsed at the uh, tennis court. And I remember waking up 
after that episode in Florida Hospital with the triple bypass surgery and also with the uh, defibrillator installed. Defibrillators have been shown conclusively to save more lives than drug treatment for arrhythmias. Dr. Scott Pollock is an electrophysiologist and cardiologist at the Florida Hospital in Orlando. As an electrophysiologist, I see many patients who are referred by other cardiologists for evaluation of different rhythm disturbances ranging from threatening rhythm disturbances where patients ultimately end up with a defibrillator to arrhythmias which are more of a, a, a bother rather than being threatening and require certain types of, of therapy. In terms of diagnosis of arrhythmia, arrhythmias tend to be transient events. They're not present all the time and we have different types of monitoring capabilities that detect these rhythm disturbances. We also have invasive means, meaning tests that involve putting catheters into the body where many times we're able to induce an arrhythmia that a patient may have uh, at some other time. One of Dr. Pollock's distinguished colleagues, cardiovascular surgeon Dr. Kevin Akala, will assist him by performing the surgical procedure for the placement of an internal cardiac defibrillator. The surgeon's role in this procedure is assisting the electrophysiologist, or in this case Dr. Pollock, with this patient by actually placing the defibrillator in the patient's body, uh, typically underneath the skin or underneath the the muscle in the chest wall, as well as introducing the lead into the heart and making sure that it's in an appropriate position to not only defibrillate the patient, but if necessary, to be able to uh, capture the patient's heart rhythm to understand if the patient's in a normal rhythm or in an irregular ventricular fibrillation or tachycardic rhythm. Dr. Akula has implanted the implantable defibrillator. Now we are, are able to communicate with the defibrillator via our, our programmer, which is um, a sophisticated computer. You can see here on our screen the surface ECG, so we are always monitoring the patient's heart rhythm. And this is the internal electrogram signal, which is actually giving us the signal from the lead that Dr. Akala has screwed into the patient's heart to sense and detect the lethal arrhythmias. We previously were able to induce ventricular tachycardia uh, which is a dangerous uh, arrhythmia, but we would like to induce ventricular fibrillation. So we are going to attempt to um, induce the patient into the dangerous arrhythmia. With this paper strip here, we're actually able to see what the device is detecting within the patient's yeah. body. And these complexes here represent the, the dangerous arrhythmia. So it shows us that detection was successful and subsequently the device charged up and delivered a shock right here and restored uh, normal rhythm, uh, thus bringing the patient back to life. So essentially what we have just now completed is we have simulated the very uh, purpose the device was put in, that is to say we've induced a dangerous rhythm disturbance, we've shown the device is capable of detecting the uh, rhythm disturbance and adequately treating it. So Scott, you're happy now with uh, the th th fibrillation thresholds we're and the sensing pacing We're happy with the threshold death. and the device is functioning properly. Now before we leave the OR, we're going to program the device uh, to the real life uh, settings where we want the device to detect the arrhythmia. And those settings will vary uh, by patient, in other words, what the patient's presenting rhythm disturbance was. Having a defibrillator would be analogous to having a paramedic in your chest with the paddles ready to shock you should your heart develop a dangerous rhythm disturbance.